Here's the Raspberry Pi 5 hooked up to two devices to send serial data. First, we have my phone, and second, we have a Xiao SAMD21 uh, Arduino uh, capable chip over here. So we have two serial ports available. The first is this new debug port right here. This is the first Raspberry Pi to have this. And um, this is Serial Zero, uh, which is the alias for TTY AMA 10. And this is always active and enabled. Now, on this port, you can get a cable and break it out. The left is TX, the middle is ground, and the right is RX. So you can take that and connect it to a chip. So before I go too far, let me just show you this in action. I have two of the same program, program open here. And let's show you the phone tr character transmission first. So I was just testing it out here. Uh, I called this sent to phone and ran it, just period, forward slash, and then the program. This has been already compiled in C++, so I'm just going to write test, T-E-S-T -E here. And there we go, test. Just hitting random characters. Now let's do the same, same thing here, and we're going to send to the SAMD. All right, let me try this again here. Test, T-E-S-T. -E All right, and there we go. It sent it. This X is a keyboard, so it's sending uh, data here. So up here, this is the more traditional port. People are used to using the GPIO, and uh, this is called TTY AMA0, and GPIO... 14 is the TXD and 15 is the R. To turn that off and on, you go to your preferences, then Raspberry Pi configuration, and then interfaces, and then this is it the uh, serial port. Now, one thing to note is the Raspberry Pi 5 hasn't been out very long, and some of the documentation is slightly off, and that's okay. Um, they just mentioned here, I'll, I'll, I'll put all the links in the description, but here they mention that uh, TTY AMA0 is the default connector for the UART port, the debug port here, and it's actually AMA10. Now the alias is correct, that seri the serial 0A alias is correct here, but this needs a, a 10 here instead of a 0. Now on the Arduino side of things, here uh, we have the receive of the Arduino. This is the last pin down on the right, right here, and this is ground. So the grounds are connected. This goes back to the central pin here on the debug connector and then TX comes here connects to RX we're going through this N1004 diode sometimes this helps for th for this device definitely helps for the TNC's um, doesn't really I found it didn't really matter but it depends on uh, what you see in your results and your device if you're connecting to a 5 volt logic level uh, device then you're going to need a level shifter but these both use 3.3 volt uh, TTL logic so no level shifter needed there. Alright let's dive in from the start and uh, go into the details. I just freshly installed the bookworm operating system here using the Raspberry Pi imager and this is version 1.7.5 and uh, this is the 64-bit uh, bookworm install. 
Now one of the first things I do is I go to the dev folder and then list all the ports. So you can see here dash dev and then I'll list it out here. And we get something like this. Now I see this one port open serial zero and it's pointing to this now I believe that this is the new debugger port right here and that if we want to use this old style GPIO communication method through the 40 pin header here then we have to do a few things Now, for good measure, I'm going to check a few things here in the boot directory. We're going to look at config.txt first, and then we'll look at this command cmd line.txt. All right, so we go down to the end, and usually when new serial ports are enabled, then we see things down here, so there's nothing. So we'll exit, control X, and then we're going to check out that cmd line.txt. And here's what we have up here. Okay, serial 0, the baud rate 115, 200, TTY uh, 1, yada, yada, yada. All right. X. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here, Raspberry Pi configuration, we're going to go to interfaces and then we're going to enable the serial port. OK and reboot. After rebooting let's check out that command line.txt again and it looks pretty much the same as before. We're going to exit out, then we're going to check out the config.txt again. And this time, check this out, this new parameter is on. This is when it boots up, it's going to initialize this. So we're going to get out of here. So we're going to get out of the boot folder and go back to the dev folder. All right, we're back in the dev folder. We're going to list out all the devices again, all the ports. Here we go. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to copy this test program for sending characters from GitHub. Copy it over to the desktop here. And we're going to make sure that the port is this dev TTY AMA0. We're going to navigate to the desktop where the file is located, and then we're going to compile it so we can run it. All right, now let's run it. And we can test it out here to send characters, just like randomly typing letters. And then on the phone, there's this serial USB terminal app. And make sure the baud rate's correct and it's connected here. And testing. Yada, 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 yada. It's sending characters. Perfect. Okay, so it's possible to send characters via the old method of using the GPIO uh, to, and the serial on the GPIO. All right, this cable just arrived from DigiKey. This was recommended by Adafruit, and it's like a dollar forty-five or something like that. 
Um, it looks like it's symmetric and has the same connector on each end. So I'm just going to cut it in half and uh, strip the wires. For the debugger port here, the key in the C++ program is to change this to AMA10. Now I'm going to show you a little bit. Um, the Raspberry Pi website shows a little bit different, but this is just what I'm seeing personally. To make things a little clearer here, I've put little labels on each of these. So the middle one is ground on the UART connector. The left is TX, and then the right is RX. Now the TX from the Pi goes to the receiver, which is yellow here, then ground, which is the black wire here, goes to this blue wire, and then that goes to the middle. That's tied into the middle here. So now I'm running the program, testing, and it's sending testing through to my phone. I just rebooted the Pi. All kinds of information was just sent over the debugger port while still connected here. I mean a lot of information. Just a couple notes before I close out here. First of all, at one point in the video, I did accidentally have this orange wire hooked up. Uh, this yellow wire is the receive for the FTDI cable. Um, so that's here. And just a couple other notes. Uh, this is a USB on-the-go adapter. So we go from the FTDI cable directly to the GPIO and then to the OTG adapter to this USB-C port on my phone. This setup has worked and I've tested it with Raspberry Pi 5, Raspberry Pi 4, uh, Orange Pi 5, TNC 3.6, this is the Zhao SAMD 21 by uh, Seed Studio. So this will work with quite a few devices without a level shifter and uh, yeah, so feel free to dive in and experiment. You know, it depends. You can use the aliases if you want or, or not if you don't want. Um, for something like the Orange Pi 5, there's four different serial ports, so just make sure you wire it correctly and choose the correct um, alias or port. I made a previous video on that. If you want to watch, I'll put it in the description. Well, thank you for watching everybody and I hope you find this helpful.